Hello, my name is Gerhard from Enheil. You're listening to Brutally Delicious Podcasts. Who did you know we're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast with Boo and Rainer? Hey, man. Okay, good. Hey, man. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. And, uh, it's a very long time now. Were, were you at the cruise last time? Yeah, I was there last time. We spent yeah, a lot of time uh, hanging with year. Camp Far. Yeah. Yep. I look forward to that again someday. In that little, someday. In that little bar that you guys always hang out at by the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar there. <laughs> anyway, that's my yeah. partner, Rena. Hello, Rena. Hey, Gerhard. It's nice to meet you. How are you You're doing? Too- Doing good, yeah. This, cool. You know, in spite of the circumstances, really good, actually. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I, would I you think say the last show I've been to may yeah. have been like you guys or one of those nights there on the boat. I haven't been to anything since then. You? Uh, not really. Uh, that's actually the last gig we had as well on the boat. Uh, well, except for last weekend. We actually had two gigs. Really? This weekend, actually, yeah. With actual yeah, people really, and yeah, with actual people. <laughs> <laughs> How did they go? Really good, actually. Uh, you know, it's um, we had a release date, you know, on um, Friday, last Friday, and we have been planning this, you know, this release party kind of uh, gig for um, well, quite some time now. Right. So uh, you know, Fuda, you know, the vocalist. Mm-hmm. He works at the venue here. It's more like a theater venue. And um, you know, it's like a 550-ish people venue. So at the time, uh, we were allowed 200 people in there, actually, because it's a seated venue. Oh, nice. Yeah, so uh, and, well, that was nice, actually. But, uh, you know, one week before the gig, we got new rules. So now it's <laughs> suddenly only 100. So. Oh, wow. We had to, pl- yeah, we had to play Friday and Saturday actually, and everybody. So that's fine. Everybody's sitting, you know, with a seat in between and everything. You know, it's uh, yeah. But still, what but was it, it was, like finally uh, getting back on stage after a little more than a year, right? It was great actually. It was uh, surprisingly little awkward. You know, I thought it would be a uh, worst. You know, with uh, that big uh, place with only a hundred people in it, mm-hmm. but at least it was a gig. Okay. You know, and strange as it is, that's the best we can do right now. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, in all spaces, you know, it's like 10 people or five uh, even, you know. Wow. Here, you know, pubs and stuff like that. It's yeah. like, yeah, so this was the only place we could actually play with some dignity. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was nice. I mean, we... we uh, we're all in anyway so yeah yeah and it's music we don't and care playing and it's it's music and uh at least those uh 200 people uh they got to go to a show and they got to get uh, drunk and that's uh <laughs> right that's all we can ask right now you know absolutely so yeah it was it was actually really fun uh so now uh <laughs> what will happen you know when the next gig will be impossible to say yeah you know? Rina? Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, it kind of sucks, so, doesn't it? But I'm, I'm yeah. so incredibly jealous that you guys got to do that and you have that venue. And you're in Norway, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah, like I'm in I mean, you're in Finland. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, that this is your neighboring country. So I've been like yeah. keeping some tabs on what goes on with your Corona stuff yeah. and so on. And it's so incredibly annoying with the rules <laughs> changing all the time like here it's in Finland, very confusing it's extremely confusing it's yeah. so confusing. we just have our like health ministry like write a new law that basically was intended to shut down all the restaurants shut down all the gyms you know like just nobody go there everything needs to shut down and then the yeah. party or the officials who then oversee the laws you know in practice, then had their own interpretation of the law and told everybody that you can you can still stay open if you're just like less than ten people. 
in the same space at yeah. the same time. Now they're just like, you know, fighting each other <laughs> over <laughs> what is right. And then we have like the venues and the restaurants and the pubs and, and everybody, like all the entrepreneurs are just suffering and the industries, many industries, not just restaurants, but also the events and so on are just waiting yeah. for something rational to happen, something that is not under interpretation, that is clear and we know something. Of course, this is a new situation for everybody. I know mistakes are going to be made. We're human, but still, oh, come on. But you guys had yeah. like total lockdowns at some point, right? With restaurants and stuff. Uh, well, I yeah, we had total lockdowns with everything uh, from time to time, actually, because it's very much up and down, you know? Suddenly we yeah. get three three new infected in one city and people panic and there's a lockdown. And new rules and everything like that. So it's very difficult to get that on. And it's, uh, it's a lot of talk about this these days in Norway because Oslo, for example, are heavily uh, affected by this crap. Mm -hmm. So the whole rest of the country needs to follow sort of the, the national rules, even though maybe in my city there's no problem really so uh yeah. yeah it's very annoying and I, I see that they have to do it like that because they can't make rules for each little uh, community around the country you know but it's extremely confusing and you never know you sort of uh, you have to google it what are the rules this week you know? <laughs> today, so uh, this yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, you said i mean uh, you said that you are personally doing extremely well even considering the circumstances so does that mean that you're a bit of a hermit like that you oh, that it's, oh yeah it's not i mean i you know i wouldn't go to visit people anyway you know <laughs> I, I i i like my own company you know so i uh, go to work every day i actually been to work every single day or except weekends but every day since this uh, stuff has started and I OD on people at work. So when I come home, I, I like to be alone. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I miss, uh, so to speak, is to, um, you know, go and have some beers with my friends. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's not not really possible. I mean, uh, we 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 have done so as well, but you sort of have to um, choose the people which is not nice you know because you're only allowed five people and you know sorry you you can't come today so <laughs> uh right. so we we rather skip it you know entirely instead you know so it's uh i don't know it's uh, not cool right <laughs> no. no it's not let's cool at all actually no not cool at all but let's talk about north star now that it's out what was it like trying to write and put this beast out during this whole nonsense i mean obviously it was different well, right? yeah it was different but uh to, to be honest i wouldn't say it was different in a bad way because we actually had uh, suddenly a lot of time on our hands you know uh everything else was cancelled uh we didn't have to worry about gigs or anything like that so yeah we got more time actually to concentrate on the album and uh and even because of this pandemic, it was also postponed. I'm sorry, it's a bit dark in here, but I, I always sit in the dark. So, but um, <laughs> me too, me too. Dude. No, usually oh. I, I have a, like an empty uh, Word document lighting up uh, my room here. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, because of the pandemic, um, this also got postponed like four months. It was supposed to be out in. October last year and now it was uh, postponed until late February so suddenly we had uh, a lot of time to actually work on the album experiment try out new stuff and sort of perfect it if you like so yeah it's been actually a good thing for us you know as far as promotion and stuff though it's got to be a tad bit different right because you're not doing in stores and you're not doing any kind of meet and greets or any of that sort of crap right yeah we don't do anything like that so uh yeah, it's it's stuff like this, you know, interviews. Uh, yeah. yeah, interviews. Basically, that's what we do. Right. Uh, and you know, I, we don't know <laughs> what else we can do. I mean, right. we had this gig here, but the, you know, that's more like I don't know. It's not promotion. It's more like an event, you know, just to okay, this is the day that 
the album is out, you know, right. just to I, market, you know, so. Are you thinking about any sort of live streams down the line? I know a lot of bands are doing that sort of stuff, or is that not on the cards? That's, <clears throat> we discussed this, uh, at least me and Huda, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I think the answer is no, to be honest, uh, at least for now. It uh, depends on if we get the COVID-20, uh, COVID-21 and whatever. It depends on how long this drags out, but we th we thought that we, you know, we, we don't need the money, you know, we have jobs, so right. uh, we're not uh, totally reliant on this band. And I, I understand why people simply have to do it because, because of that. But um, we don't really need it uh, because of the money, at least. I mean, we, we could do it you know, sort of to make the fans happy. But still, I think we just want to make, you know, wait until things are fun again. You know, yeah. it's not the same. To stand in a room uh, in front of a camera, and you know you, you don't get any energy. You know the audience don't get any energy from us. I mean, it's. Uh, I think it's. There are many live YouTube videos people can watch. I mean, I think that's the same thing. You know. Okay. You know so, at, at least for now, the answer is a resounding no. <laughs> <laughs> Rina. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I get it. Like you, you yes. said that you guys have jobs. That's that's like interesting always to find out what people do for actual money. <laughs> you know, I have a day job too on the back of heavy metal and it's not something that will pay my bills. But uh, so what do you do? I, well, I work at the shop actually. Um, you know, I, I sort of undecided in my role in this yet since I've been to work every day, you know, mm -hmm. I'm either a key personnel or I'm expendable, you know? Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, work at a shop that delivers, um, I don't know, infrastructure, uh, goods for the local community, you know, water, electricity, stuff like that. So I need to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. In, in my real world, I am a police dispatcher, so I'm essential oh. as well, I guess. So I'm doing the same sort of thing every day. Not yeah. missing. Got to be there. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, and, I, and I'm glad, actually, because uh, things could get worse. I mean, I, there's a lot of people that suddenly are fresh out of a job. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy about it. So, yeah, that's, and Go ahead. that's I, I find that to be a very smart move, you know, because because a lot of people in the like let's say like a lot of people who are in bands also want to work then with events or music in some way, you know, which yes. I get. But I you know, in a situation like this, it's so much better to not be completely reliant on this one bubble of yeah, things. It's like you have a it's like you're collecting all your eggs in one basket, you know. That's the problem. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So jumping back to North Star again, um, I've listened to it a few times prepping for this and however we go. But are there any tracks in there that are personal favorites or have good stories behind them? Because I'm going to tell you, listening through, Star sticks out to me as a the banger that is uh, my favorite on the record. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, uh, I just want to say something before I mentioned the song but because first of all uh it's really difficult for for me to actually pick any favorites you know because we've been working and they're with all of them for so long yes exactly and at least now um this early in the process the album is just released and uh you know to me it's you know that album just means a lot of work yeah. So I need to sort of uh, put it behind me a little bit. Maybe in five years, I have one personal favorite. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it's easier to say that about older albums, you know, when they're sort of settled, uh, you know, sort mm -hmm. of listen to it for years. Uh, that being said, I also um, want to pull out that song, Stars, mainly because... Um, Normally, when we write music, we sort of sit around each each uh, mound 
and just create riff and uh, riffs and uh, sort of put uh, some sketch together and uh, send it back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of, for example, me, I write the complete song alone. Or Fruda does the same, you know. Mm -hmm. Then we just sort of uh, take it from there. But uh, Stars was written by me and Fruda in the studio. And that's sort of uh, a thing that is pretty rare for us. You know, we never jam out a song. So uh, I like it when that happens. You know, we just go to the studio with a few ideas, basically. And, uh, you know, we make the song in, the, in an evening, uh, which is great. And when I listen to the original ideas now and actually how the song turned out, I just almost can't believe it happened in the first place. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, so, yeah. That sort of makes it more organic, though, right? I mean, that's kind of the way people used to write, right? Everybody getting in a room and writing. Yeah, exactly. And I think it and, makes uh, a difference in the end. Yes, because I think it's more, um, I don't know, unpredictable. When you we sort of uh, pan out a song that fast and just uh, go with the flow, because that's what I think happened, actually. Uh, and that's why it's so rare because you sit down in the studio with some ideas and both of us needs to be in some kind of creative mode to even mm -hmm. create a good song. You know, we've tried that before and, you know, nothing happened. Right. So f for that to happen, um, it is really rare. And I think uh, when it happens, you know, the outcome uh, might be more original than yeah. You know, the, the other stuff that you sit home and grind at for weeks and months, right. maybe. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah. So like a magical moment, yeah. one could say. Yeah, exactly. It was. And uh, that also happened on uh, the previous album. Mina uh, Wop uh, and Mina Spook. That's also that, that kind of song that was sort of created in the studio uh, by me and Fruda. So, uh, yeah. We should try uh, try it more, <laughs> you know. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. Do you find it difficult? And this is, uh, I don't know how many records now. You've been around for quite a long time. Do you find it difficult, not necessarily coming up with new ideas, but not writing the same record? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I, that makes sense, yes. But uh, I don't find it that difficult. I mean, excuse me. <clears throat> You know, from, uh, you know, we had a break, right, from 2003 uh, or something until 2008. And when we started back up in 2008, we had big issues about which way to go, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it was an extreme amount of frustration in the studio because we were uh, sort of, you know, the last album we did was uh, Blut. Right, and uh, we sort of had a lot of material uh, left from from that period, and sort of tried to implement that into the new music, and then uh, it simply didn't work at all. You know, some people wanted to strip it from keyboards and you know make it simpler, and you know, and uh, you know, we didn't agree at all, basically. <laughs> right. So, uh, so what we did. We just threw everything away and uh, sort of started from scratch. Okay, we, we, we th throw everything away. We start making brand new music, you know, completely new and mm -hmm. like we wanted to do, you know. And I think uh, also that break we had where we uh, sort of traveled a bit around with a, that thrash metal band, that right. also sort of tuned us a little bit in on this new way of writing, which is a lot more riff-based uh, metal instead of complete arrangement-based mm -hmm. stuff that we were used to before. And I think um, f from that decision, I think we sort of found the recipe for what we want to do. Uh, and, you know, uh, or the path, if you like, that we want to follow. And um, I think even even if we sort of follow the same base recipe, there's still progression in our music, you know, 
uh, I think uh, the point is to just strive to make better songs all the time, right. you know, within the same framework. Sure. And that's what we're trying to do. I think the next album as well will probably be based on the same, you know, style as we're doing now, only, you know, better songs. Right. That's the, that's the key. I mean, it's not, that's, that's the difficult part, you know, because you can't, Say you have eight uh, songs on each album. You, you know those, those eight new songs cannot always be better than everything you did, uh, did in oh, the sure. past. That's just impossible, you know. Right. And uh, at least to to fans, it's uh, completely impossible. So uh, we just want to sort of at least sit with the feeling that this album is the strongest so far. Right. All in all, you know. So. Just like that's the right yes exactly and and I, I don't know what happens when we when we write music it's uh i think most of the songs just get uh, their own identity you know and i think uh this album and the previous album are kind of different within the same framework right so yeah okay i'm good Rena. you got anything else no, that's really interesting, and I like the way you think because <clears throat> you you can definitely have like a distinctive sound and still not make the same record over and over again. And I think that's what you're you know going for that there's no need to sort of change the bass setting, <laughs> so to speak. The oh, exactly. Yeah, if, if, yeah, if it works, then a good recipe. I mean, why change it? You know, right? Yeah. yeah. I also agree with that. I'll leave you with an anecdote from like my my band's keyboard player, Sami Bowman, once said a very wise thing, I think, which was that it is the sign of an excellent band that in their catalog there's like um, complete gold and then absolute shit <laughs> because it yeah, says yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, you know that they are not to just explore and evolve and expand what they're doing and that's where the magic happens because if you're just like you know doing this and have like a very narrow conception of your own music and music in general maybe or the genre that you're in or whatever i think you're yeah. cutting off the wings of your creativity so what you guys exactly. are doing exactly and i think uh, even though we have the sort of uh I'm just gonna put on my word document again. <laughs> uh, well, it's a little bit better, but uh, I think um, even though uh, we sort of have the same recipe, uh, everything is still allowed in our music. Yeah. You know, it's not like uh, you know, it's not really rigid. Right, everything is allowed. We can Good. sort of make a complete acoustic song or something. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's and uh, maybe we change our minds next month, you know, maybe next <laughs> right. album will be completely different. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think we found uh, a good, uh, good path now. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. You, you took influences from another band and how they write. And this is like all very open minded and great. And, and like, I applaud you guys for that. And Thank the album is really also wanted to say that. Yes, really. Yeah, love it. So I good. Love it. Uh, uh, sometimes you fall out a little bit. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it works yeah. in a stupid way that if Bruce now cuts me off, then, you know, there's not going to be two voices, just the one. Oh, okay. And okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. You're blaming me? Absolutely. For <laughs> everything. You <know> that. <laughs> Gerhard, that's all I've got, really. Uh, records out on the February 26th. So, it's already out. But anybody listening, all, uh, can grab it. Awesome, my friend. Thank you for taking the time. Good luck with the record. No problem. And, and maybe I'll see you next yeah, year. You too. Hopefully, yeah. next January, February, maybe. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> with a piña colada. <laughs> you got it, man. Yeah. In that little bar, <laughs> that little alcove. Yes. Stop right, talking about wait. the boat. Everybody's been on the boat but me. It's you not there. The <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. it'll be your turn one day. Yep. Yeah. So I hope to meet you there too. But hey, dude, you have a good night, and and hopefully you too. we all of you. This. Be well, my friend. Thanks. All, all right. right. Bye bye. Bye.